So for the upcoming collab Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid with Alchemy Stars, Toru just got released her kit and today let's have a look at it. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about Toru. We're going to be evaluating her kit. It's looking okay. There is like, there's been a little bit of time since this has been released. And so there has been some like public sentiment as you can see. I'm not sure why there is a, a gun there. I hope that doesn't get me in trouble with YouTube. But yeah, there's, there's quite a fair a bit of different sentiments, different opinion regarding her. And so of course in this video we're going to be having a look at her kit where she potentially fits in in terms of fire teams as well as taking a look at like some of the either competitors or inspiration for her kit. And so with that being said let me jump into a larger version of this guy over here and that is why my explorer, my firefox is going to be a little bit squished so that you guys can read everything here. Alright but before we get into the kit I just need to show you her face one more time like look at her she's so freaking cute. At this point, because they are revealing Toru's kit, I suspect that it's only gonna be Toru and Kana that are going to be the playable characters. I don't think we will be seeing Lukoa, I don't think we will be seeing Elma, and probably not Fafnir either. That's just the gut feeling that I have right now, and so with that being said, let's jump into these skills over here. Alright, so to kick things off as usual, this is a fully juiced out MBT Toru, so we can probably assume that the CD and the preemptive strike they're going to be like cd4 in reality for a bt0 and no preemptive strike and so what that means is that her active skill fire breath is only going to be on cd4 and deals 360 percent damage to 13 tiles in a diamond shape like that centered on one selected tile and knocks back enemies okay i think that's pretty cool it sounds like kind of like an explosion thing so if it comes down here and then like it's hitting outwards then like the enemies that are like from the center or they are going to be like knocked back from the center. I know I kind of like explained that really badly but imagine like imagine an anime and then you've got like a group of people or a group of villains and then your hero like jumps in he like flies in and then at the impact all your villains like fly away. That's how I think fire breath is gonna work. Honestly it sounds pretty cool to me. I don't think we have a mechanic that reads like that yet and so pretty excited to see it. 360% damage is a little bit on the low side and the diamond shape does make it a little bit awkward for like the 2x2 two two bosses but I do think that it is going to be a solid skill especially because of its massive range right like 13 tiles for 360% you've got Sinsa who is hitting a lot but like realistically speaking all of the tiles outside of the first two rows kind of doo-doo. However, the last consideration for Fire Breath is the fact that it is on a 4 CD cooldown at BT0, which is... It's, it's kind of crap. I personally think that it's way too long. I think it should be like base CD of 3 and the BTs not lowering that CD at all. I think this issue is going to be very similar to like some of the other ones like Wrath or like Jonah. Other characters that just really require those breakthroughs to really, really shine. And even with those breakthroughs, still don't really shine. Like don't get me wrong guys, at MBT this looks appropriate, CD3 with preemptive, but at BT0 it's yeah it's looking kind of doo-doo. And the reason that I'm so critical of the CD is because it is realistically competing with like Haron, with uh, Sinsa, with the more detonator style skills. Because to be honest that is exactly what it is right, it is a detonator style skill. You are selecting one tile and then so you're getting those 13 tiles around it and you're doing full damage to all of those tiles. On top of that, it is going to be super effective against like the multi-tile bosses or units. Uh, there is no reason as to why, well, this is really like a sniper skill. Well, I guess the one thing that you could argue for it being a sniper skill is the fact that you can select it and that you can kind of like pinpoint it, which kind of sounds like snipery. And so I think that's a pretty good amount of discussion for Fire Breath, so let's move on to the chain combo, Nuclear Meltdown. Oh yeah, it's actually a freaking sick ass name. Alright, so for chain skill or whatever chain skill, let's have a look at the 13 chain, deals 145% damage four times, assigned randomly to enemies within three surrounding clusters of this unit and deals 30% splash damage to four tiles in the cross shape. On top of that, when a target takes damage more than once, the damage from the second time is halved. Okay, so there are a few units that this skill is very much inspired from. So first, let me direct your attention to this guy over here, 30% splash damage to four tiles in a cross shape. If we go over to Fleur, Old Mate Fleur is a sniper and as you can see, he's going to be doing 30% splash damage to four tiles 
stars in a cross shape. And so if you guys do know how Fleur works, then this is very much reminiscent of that. However, the thing about Fleur is that he deals 180%, whereas if we go back to Toru, she only deals 145. But the thing about Toru's is that she is going to do it four times. So theoretically, if she hits like the same unit four times, then it's probably going to out damage Fleur's. However, the weakness to Toru's version is that she is going to have it constrained within three surrounding clusters. Whereas if you go over to Fleur, you'll see it is a freaking global CC. Sorry, by CC, I meant chain combo. There's a CC could mean anything, right? Contingency contract, la da 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 da. Anyway, yeah, so she is doing more damage, but she is constrained a little bit. But on top of that, it is assigned randomly. And that assigned randomly mechanic combined with when a target takes damage more than once, the damage from the second time is halved. If I come over to Luke, for example, you will see over here, deals 165% damage four times assigned randomly to enemies within three clusters. Okay, kind of sounds identical at this point. And then we go on to see that the second part of the skill is also identical. When a target takes damage more than once, the damage from the second time fourth is halved. Very, very similar to Sariel over here. So 150% damage five times randomly assigned within three clusters. And then it also does the halving as well. To be honest, I have not used Luke that much, but I use Sariel quite a fair bit. And using her chain combo, it, <laughs> it always feels really bad, but I think that can be attributed to her low attack stat because she is a converter. However, it's gonna be a little bit odd because this one is 150% damage five times. Whereas if I go back to Toru, it's gonna be 145% damage four times. And yes, I did mention like the attack stats. So we've got 3.4K over here. So let's have a look at Sariel's. And so for Sariel herself, you guys are gonna see her attack stat at max is gonna be 2.4K. I am I am very much praying, very much hoping, and it probably will. The 3.4K is going to make up for that lower percentage as well as hitting one less time. All right, so how exactly do I feel about this one over here? Um, It's, it's really hard to say. I think it's kind of okay if she does hit like more units. To, to me, I think if she can hit more units or target more units, she's gonna get more value out of it, right? Because when she hits more units, she's going to be hitting for full damage. Like the same logic is for Luke, same logic for Sariel. And on top of that, combined with the 30% splash damage, I think it's okay. The fact of the matter is, is that this skill, it's not really innovative. It's just really a combination of two skills that already exist. Technically speaking, it is new, but it's not like overly exciting. With that being said, however, I am still excited to actually try it out and see how it plays out. Because in my opinion, this skill really makes her like a pseudo AOE sniper, if that kind of makes sense. It's like everywhere she hits, she's going to do splash damage. Like it just really reminds me of those AOE snipers from Arknights. And so I kind of take back what I said about innovative, like the play style is probably going to be, it's going to be a little bit exciting, but yeah. And so with that, I think think we can just tick off the chain combo and move on to the equipment skill which is it's not really interesting but it actually looks really strong equipment skill loves in the air every combo increases chain combo damage by 1% and splash damage by 0.5%. And so how I feel about this is that like every time you make a move, for every combo she hits, so for example, like one combo through to 15 to activate Aurora time. So if we assume 15 as the cap, because that is actually the cap, then she could theoretically get up to 15% extra chain combo damage as well as 7.5% splash damage. So that would boost her splash damage, this one over here, the 30 to 36. 7.5 and then this guy over here potentially to a hundred and uh a hundred and sixty percent however that is assuming that it is going to be working additively so 145 plus 15 percent it's going to be 160 percent however if we instead did 145 times 1.15 that's going to give you 166.75 percent i think whether it's multiplicative or additive it is it's a decent one like it's it's solid, it's robust, but it's not exciting. For me personally, I would rather something like, oh, like sparks fly in the air and you do like an additional two attacks at like 20% damage each, something like that. New particle animations or like, we've got like Bethel summoning up creatures, something exciting like that. This isn't exciting. Again, on paper, it's good, it's solid, but it's not exciting. All right, and so with that being said, that's my thoughts on Toru over here. I am still rolling for this blonde dragon. I'm like, mm, 
Chef's Kiss. But with all of that being said, let's compare her to some of her competitors. So for example, we have Jonah, who is also another six star fire sniper. So just looking at this one over here, it deals 175% damage to four enemies within three surrounding clusters. We can already see that the kit is actually kind of different, right? Where Toru can hit the same enemy multiple times, Jonah cannot. However, as we already discussed, if Toru is hitting the same enemy, there are diminishing returns. But if Toru does manage to hit like separate enemies, if it was like if she hit all four enemies, then Jonah would actually potentially win out. That is assuming no splash effect. If it was me, I'd probably take the splash effect as well as Toru's kind of flexibility. Because for Jonah, if there is only one enemy, she is going to do 175% damage, period. That's it. Hit once. On the other hand, for her active skill, Jonah enters noon state which increases her attack by 10% and chain combo by 30% for two rounds. That's honestly quite strong. However, for me, I'm a guy that likes utility. I really do like the pushbacks. I like the resets. I'm a massive fan of Chiron, massive fan of Sins' defense down, massive fan of like the pushing and pulling of the teleport, stuff like that. Jonah is a straight up DPS increase. I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I definitely take Taurus over that. And on top of that, Taurus is a need, I remind you, it's very much more like a detonator skill and we already know detonator class, detonator skills, detonator just really is overwhelmingly dominating the game right now. And so although Toru is not actually a detonator, she is classed as a sniper, she could very much feel like a detonator. Sometimes, because the chain combo technically still is single target until it splashes. Anyway, moving on, let's have a look at Frostfire. Alright, so Frostfire is kind of more similar to Fleur, deals 180% damage to three nearest enemies, so she has the unlimited <laughs> <laughs> unlimited range and it just does a straight up 180% damage to the three nearest enemies it's the very same uh, not problem but feature I guess as Jonah and Fleur if there is only one target she just does 180% damage and that's it on the other hand she has Meteor Storm which is pretty cool to be honest I'm a massive fan of these old seal characters with their viz system it, they're just like they're just really special you know but anyway let me get back to it cost 10 viz to deal 180% damage to one selected tile within three surrounding clusters and deals 50% splash damage to four tiles in a cross shape around it. Now, this kind of sounds like Toru's but toned down. It's like within the confines of three clusters, you can select one tile and then you do a little bit of damage around that tile. Whereas for Toru's, she is like, it's like a massive nuke, right? It's literally like... <laughs> However, the silver lining to Frostfire's one is that she can actually recast it depending on how much viz she has. And so in that regard, we would have to take into account like the CD. So for example, maybe like three turns or four turns, Frostfire, I think she gains like five viz every turn. Yup, she does. And she also gains five viz when she kills a tiger with the active skill. So whilst Frostfire's doesn't sound nearly as impressive as Toru's, it could technically be recast multiple times. And the fact that it's targeted, like you could end up doing more damage to like, it's just a little more precise, I feel, about Meteor Storm. All right, and so that is our second fire sniper with Frostfire. Let's move on to Leona who is our fire sniper at a five star rank. So Leona has always been a little bit strange because she like, while she is classified as a sniper, to me, she feels more like a detonator because of her chain combo. Essentially, she functions like a detonator and applies burn. That's that's pretty much it. However, coming back to her active skill, she deals 90% damage five times to random enemies. So that means that she could potentially do 450% damage to one enemy. And on top of that, when she gets her ascension two for her equipment, she can also also apply burn. Uh, I think it's kind of like not really comparable because her active skill is already like very very different to Taurus. And then on the flip side, her chain combo is also quite different as well. And so yeah, for me, Leona, she kind of competes more with like the detonators. But with that being said, let's move on to Nails, who is the last fire sniper at four stars. So as you can see, he does 140% damage to the three nearest enemies. A very, very standard sniper chain combo. But as for the active skill, this one's a little bit exciting. So he is able to choose one target as the tile, sacrifice some HP, and then he deals the equal amount of damage to enemies within nine tiles. And then on top of that, he makes them start bleeding and then his basic HP gets increased by 50%. Honestly, the places that you would bring Nails is completely different to the places you would bring Toru. Nails is very much known for his damage over time, his dot with his bleeds. Like you've seen those videos, right? Like the 50k, 95k damage over one turn from five stacks of bleed, stuff like that. 
like that, that's this boy right here. You're not going to be seeing stuff like that from Toru. Toru is just going to be like literally and so yeah, that's kind of like my comparisons with the current fire snipers. But to be honest, you could probably compare her more to like from each of these components, right? So like comparing fire breath to like detonator skills, comparing chain combos to like the sniper skills. And then on top of that, comparing the equipment skill with other like augmenting type equipment skills that give damage rather than having some really sick effect. And so with all of that being said, that kind of wraps up my evaluation for Toru. A lot of people are trashing on her, but like I I'm pretty excited to see what she is going to bring to the table. Because like I said, she really feels like a new archetype, like an AOE sniper. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Like whether she was good or not would not have stopped me from rolling her. And if you guys are interested, I will be rolling her on stream when she drops. So stick around for that one. But otherwise, I think she is a solid character. It's just the fact that she is in fire, which is like probably the most saturated in terms of like powerhouses or DPSs. And so, yeah, I think it's a about this time where I start passing off the question to you guys. How do you guys feel about Toru? Do you guys feel that she is appropriately tuned, undertuned, or overtuned? And so I'm just wondering how you guys feel about this kit ahead of time without any testing. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you do end up doing so, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, as your girl Toru once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.